morning yay monday i am going to attempt to do a video every week to give you an update um, for art class what we've done for the week so i'm going to start with my website kids should know how to get here it's listed on the homework pages off the trs website so this has anything that we've done in class they can go through the slideshow they can click any of the links uh, for the days that we've been remote. This obviously also goes back to when we were here at school. So when you click on all of those links, the weekly slideshow will be what we did for the week. So I have two classes. I get to see them twice a week. Um, the first week we talked about what we were going to be doing in remote because obviously kids don't have materials at home or if they do, they're not the same as a friend. So we're focusing really on the process of creating, which is why they all should have an art journal that they've opened from classroom. When they open from classroom, the art journal is very, very boring. So there's like nothing to it. It literally says art digital portfolio blanks name art journal. So um, they're going to fill these in and edit as needed. Last week, we worked really hard on making sure we knew how to get to our drive, making sure we knew how to get to our art journal, making sure we knew how to create a slide. Uh, we started um, inserting photographs and we've done that for our value drawings from our last summative. So I'm hoping that we will just continue to learn how to use these digital platforms so that we can share our artwork and our thoughts in one spot. So everybody's going to be making an art journal it's just going to be digital. So um, if they do want to sketch or do things, that's great. Um, they can take a picture of it with their Chromebook and insert it right into the slideshow. So I'm not worried about what their artwork is going to look like because we're literally just focusing on the process, the way that an artist thinks, the way that an artist solves problems. Um, so the formative assessments will be their daily artwork responses which so far have been with Google Forms or Flipgrid. We might add more into that, not really sure. Uh, we're kind of figuring out new ways to make it exciting as, as we go. So the summative is gonna be that body of evidence. So the whole art journal is gonna show their process from the first day of remote all the way to when this craziness ends. At the time of making the slideshow, I said more information as we work through this new and exciting time of learning. Woo! Um, Part of that is because I'm I'm actually in an assessment grad class right now, and it's perfect timing because it's helping me work through this and how we're going to assess this body of evidence. So um, we have a checklist that I'll show you in a minute. These are things though that you can start gathering at home. Regular art supplies that you have, that's great. If you have paint, great. Um, we can make watercolor paint with food coloring. You can also make almost a poster tempera paint with food coloring and cornstarch. Uh, another thing to start collecting is non-traditional materials. So things that are, you probably would throw away. I, I told the kids, make sure you let someone know that you're collecting these things for art because it's going to look like you're just collecting trash. <laughs> so styrofoam, cardboard, yogurt cups, egg cartons, stuff like that. Um, we are looking at a bunch of artists that use mixed media, use found objects, um, we also have our art term of the week, which was once a week because I saw them once a week. Now I see them twice. So we changed it to art terms of the week. So every time I see them in class, we learn a new art term and we do a daily artwork response. Those are two things that are definitely happening each class. And then any other notes that they take during class or doodles that they're doing while they're listening, which I, that's, I prefer them to be doing that. Uh, it helps them retain information better. True story, science, yay. Um, and to post that to their slideshows. Um, so that was basically day one and two. We did mixed media and texture. We looked at Dada artists, um, specifically Max Ernst and the way he used frottage. So frottage is, is just doing like a texture rubbing. Um, we probably all did this in kindergarten where you put the leaf under the paper and you rub the crayon over it so you get almost a print of the leaf. So Dada artists were the ones that sort of started using that in their art. Um, and we looked at a lot of Max Ernst's artwork with 
bretage and bretage. So a lot of texture, a lot of surrealism. Um, and that's kind of where we jumped off from that point about Max Ernst. In our second week, so last week, I found that the kids were really not understanding understanding the concept of an art journal um, and what they were supposed to be doing. So first class of the week, I tried to reiterate how we're doing this. Um, I showed them an example of mine just so that they could see kind of where we were headed. So this, this isn't what it should look like. This is what it could look like. So you can edit your art journal however you want. Um, as I said, there's a checklist that will give you everything that needs to be in here. You can find that checklist on Classroom. Um, you can also find it on the homework page. So if you don't know how to get to the homework page, you go to Three River School, homework pages, choose the grade that your student's in, and all the UAs are usually down at the bottom. So um, here's my checklist. Here's my website. So the checklist right now is updated for the first two weeks of remote learning. And it will tell you that the first slide needs to be the student name, grade, and class time. So that's going along with the competency of presenting. So each slide that I have listed here, I also have relating back to a competency, um, which I've put down below. So if you want to read through those, you totally can. I left you some works cited spots um, so that you can click on the websites and see what the standards are, the national standards. And um, I'm, I'm really trying to communicate that the product at the end of art, you know, here's what I made, is not uh, as important as the rest of it. Um, it's great when a product comes out and it looks good, uh, but it's really, and I'm sure you've heard this a million times, it's really about the process. It's about learning how to fix a mistake. It's about going back and revising. And that goes with anything, not just art. Um, it goes with the scientific method. So um, it's that same kind of cycle of figuring out a problem and then reworking it and checking your evidence. So um, I feel like I've touched on everything. The website also has a YouTube channel, which this will be posted on, um, Sign Up Genius. So if you want to make a meeting with Ms. Coletti, <laughs> you just click on there. The code to get in is TRS Art. So Three River School Art, TRS Art. And then it'll pop up all the times of availability that I have. So anything that works for you. Um, the last thing we did last week was a check-in. So. I had a lot of people reaching out, not understanding how art class was remotely. So we did a little check-in. I gave them a survey uh, through Google Slides, which I can open. So the check-in, something that's formative is not graded. It's really for the teacher to look at, to see where they can go back, reteach something, or move on. So. I wanted to make sure we even knew how to get to Google Drive so that, you know, I'm not saying, okay, add this to your slide, and I still have someone who can't even find Google Drive. So we're going through the steps to make sure that we're starting simple and then adding everything else. I also, at the end, asked them about how they were feeling about remote learning. And I'm going to be honest with you. I wasn't expecting the responses that I got. I mean, I knew kids were overwhelmed. I didn't know how overwhelmed they were. So by far, um, I think there was, out of my 10 classes, I think there was three classes that answered no. They were like, if, but I mean like one or two kids had answered, I, I'm not overwhelmed. So for the most part, your child is overwhelmed by school online. They're having a hard time focusing. I can attest to that. I was at home last week teaching because my kids were home. Um, it's really hard. It's very distracting. So just 
give them a little bit of grace. They're, they're doing their best. This is an unprecedented, strange time. Um, but I'm here for them, if it's art related or not. Um, anything that they need help with, I, I'm totally ready for whatever they need. So I just want them to keep that in mind. I have Mondays completely open other than a, you know some meetings and connections, but I can make a time work. So there's never a reason, I, I say this all the time, there's never a reason to suffer in silence. Don't sit there and not ask for help. And I know it can be hard to ask in front of a whole classroom, which is why I'm giving you the opportunity to sign up for time. And it can, it's just us and we'll figure it out and I can share my screen and you can share yours and, and we'll figure it out. Okay, so there's my rambling YouTube video for uh, the first two weeks of remote learning. I miss regular teaching, but um, it's great to see everybody twice a week. So there's that, right? All right. Ooh, I hit the wrong thing because that's what Miss Coletti does, hits the wrong things. <laughs> All right, cool. Well, we will uh, see you soon then. Have a great week.